how ought we think about our you know peers, collaborators, co-conspirators uh, in the process of creating who we want to be and become? So I'll give you uh, an example from my laboratory. Um, and um, so I specifically decided to populate my lab with people from different disciplines. So there's actually minimal overlap in the expertise, Mm -hmm. um, which is very different than the traditional laboratory where pretty much everyone has the same expertise and there's one person at the top that everyone's trying to learn from um, and sort of replicate that expertise and sort of push it forward a little bit. Um, So in my lab, you know, I've had um, uh, biologists, immunologists, engineers, like electrical engineers, mechanical engineers, um, we've had a gastrointestinal surgeon, cardiac surgeon, we've had a dentist, and it's constantly changing and evolving. And to me, um, so it's like almost like when we're sitting around a table brainstorming, everyone can bring a unique perspective. Everyone feels validated because no one else can bring that perspective. Everyone has you know, access to different tools that, that you know, they different skill sets. And we have pe- we've had people from 30 different countries in the lab, you know, people um, in different countries have d- different ways that they think because they've been exposed to different education systems. And so to me, that's one of the ways in the lab that have really tried to create this um, innovative ecosystem where there's always a little bit of friction, you know, between people in the sense of like, lear- like, like when, when you have like an engineer talking to a biologist, they kind of have to learn each other's language a little bit to, 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 to communicate. But I feel that kicks things into this high energy brain state um, where, where, where it's like, you're really getting energized, you know, because you're learning, you're constantly learning from the people around you and, and thinking differently and, and, and sort of, um, you know, this kind of cognitive irritation, you know, like you're like, oh, but like, it's like these counterintuitive kind of ways of thinking, you're constantly bumping up against that. And so that to me has been one big, big, um, um, uh, you know, th- thing about my lab that has just been so important, you know, to tr- mm. create that type of culture. Um, and another thing just to, just, just to throw in there too, is, is that I've realized, and again, through a lot of experimentation stuff that like now mentorship is so important and supporting people like the support that my mom gave me, had I not had that, I would have just fallen through the cracks. Like I wouldn't have, you know, I wouldn't have been able to progress very far, I don't think, you know, and I just think that we need to really, through my career, I've realized we really need to support each other. Um, And so when people join my lab, I commit to being a mentor for life, I bring people into my office, and I say, I'm your mentor for life, like I'm here. And I'm not doesn't end when you leave the lab, you can contact me at any time, I will always be here for you. And I think when people hear that, they they're more likely to go all in and give it their all and they're more likely to take risks and 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 to fail because they know they're going to have the support you know around them to to help them kind of stand back up and 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 keep going 